I never thought that my life choices would lead to my son dying at 17. That one better? Because he sure. was 17. Sure. <sighs> okay, hold on. I think of tears coming. Hold on. Okay, no, let's just keep it like that. Okay. All right, hold on. Hi, my name is Nancy, and um, I've been at City View since the start, um, almost three years and something, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I was born in Mexico, uh, was raised in Chicago. I've been in Chicago since I was about a year and a half old. Um, I lived in the rough parts of Chicago. Um, I lived three blocks away from the Cook County Jail, so that'll tell you. And um, my childhood was pretty rough. Uh, my mom was very strict. I grew up in a Catholic school, Catholic school up to 12th grade, you know. Uh, well, not up to 12th grade, because I kicked, got kicked out in high school. So when I had my first two kids, uh, Aaron and Nathan, um, I was in a relationship um, that I went through a lot of domestic violence. Um, rape and um, just being told that I was never any good and um, that's when I was like 15 to 17 and um, so when I had to do something I had to just leave I couldn't be there anymore so when I turned 18 I took my two kids in the middle of winter and I left and I had to go somewhere. I couldn't stay there. So um, when I did that, I um, again was sleeping on, you know, one friend's house, you know, couch jumping basically. and. Um, and um, I found a family, you know. To me, that was my family. And it was, you know, a gang. And, you know, I was the best at it because I had so much anger in me. And I was so much just to pour out. So around this time, um, I ended up having my now 24-year-old, John Levin, which I didn't know was pregnant going in with stomach ache and coming up with a baby <laughs> but um so now his father doesn't want nothing to do with him and so I'm game banging doing drugs drinking and I'm with this little baby all the time so um my son's father um uh, and I we were both in gangs and my son's father lived always in the neighborhoods and you know we're all neighborhoods so that led to my son wanting to be in a game opposite of me because his dad was what you call the Inca which is the president of a game and he wanted to be like his dad and of course you know he used to see me being a game and his dad being a game he didn't really have a choice or you know well he did have a choice because I have another son that never wanted to be in that stuff but he didn't really the environment that he was in he chose to be in a gang and his dad never said no you know like he never got punished or stuff like that and I'm sure you know I think I was not a good example for him and his dad was not a good example he didn't he followed our footsteps you know so I made a stupid decision I used to bring drugs from Mexico and all that fun stuff the last one I did I was like oh this is the last one I'm going to do and I ended up getting caught with a lot of drugs 
131 pounds and 6 kilos of coffee in Texas. And they put me in Slammer for three years. And that was horrible. That I had nobody there. I had no visitors. I had no, nobody. But the family that I did have, which was my gang friends, they stood up for me and you know they sent me commissary and stuff like that and I got out so I was determined I I didn't want that life anymore I didn't want to go to jail anymore I don't want this life I don't want to do drugs I don't want to drink anymore and I'm not going to go to rehab because it's it when you do drugs and you do alcohol it's a choice it's I'm not going to sit here and do that make that choice anymore because I was in an environment where it was going to be available and I know if it's available I'm going to do it so I'm gonna do something about it so I had a friend come over oh invite me to Arizona just for the week you know and I fell in love with Arizona and I was like you know what I moved to Arizona and I did I packed up I left I came over here had a job offer, they gave me six months rental, they paid for my um, traveling expenses, and I had a job here, and I was great. So, um, I decided that I was, you know, this is the life I wanted. It was peaceful, no gangs, nothing, nothing to make any temptations, right? So, I, I was, it was being, everything was going good, and then my boys would come in the summer, and Everything was fine until I get a phone call on August 2nd of 2000. I get the worst phone call that anybody could ever get. Oh my god. Is it my firstborn? He was 17 years old. Killed by a gang. That was the same type of gang as I was. I think when I lost Aaron, I was upset at God, you know, because why did you take my child? And I didn't understand all that, you know. But, you know, I think, like I said, January, February, I, I don't know, I think God was talking to me, and, you know, I think when I seen Carlos, because he was a cute baby, he still is cute, but (laughs) when I seen him, you know, I felt like God was telling me, I'm giving you one more chance, this is your child, this is your do-over, whatever you missed in all of your kids' lives, you're going to get to do it with him, and I, to this day, I still believe that Aaron it's not Carlos but I still believe that God had taken away Aaron but he blessed me with Carlos and I think that God has been chasing me to follow him you know he's been like where have you been because you know all the times that you know church and, and jail and you know all those times and I just haven't been open to it on uh, November 1st was our first baptisms at the Denny's Tim Denny's and Carol Denny's house sure enough I got baptized and let me tell you that since I got baptized life is just amazing yeah I mean everybody has hard days you know but it's just like a blessing and I think since I got baptized like it's given me um more courage to speak about Jesus because before I didn't have courage like Jesus, you know, and I was like, hey, you know, he's pretty awesome, you know, and I don't know, I think that's why I invite so many people, because it's awesome, I don't care who you are, like, you're at a grocery store, oh yeah, you you know about Jesus, come my way, you know, I don't have Bible verses, I mean, if you want a couple, I have Philippians 4.13, I have Luke 7.48, Luke 7, 48 is, says, and then the Jesus said to the woman, all your sins are forgiven. It's all I need. Even through all the things I've been through, even the loss of Aaron, I have been blessed 
with so much. I've had a new perspective on life. I've had freedom from just all the negativity that I used to have before. God has given me purpose, you know. Um, I think he's given me purpose, you know, so that I could spread his word and and bring people to his church. And we're going to have to get a bigger theater because, you know, that's what I'm here for. Because I have the gift to give. I never thought that my life choices would lead to my son's death. But God has never stopped chasing me, and he's been with me this whole time.